I really think you should reconsider building these evil drone things, Kevin. They're gonna take over the world. They're gonna just zap my kids' brains and... Drones do make me uncomfortable. It's just like building the tools to end humanity? Come on, that's not cool. Uh, now I gotta worry about your acrinoplans taking pictures of me while I'm swimming in the ocean, too. It messes with the radio signal between the controller and the drone. Works out well. Evil to even think of how to make drones. This is the Friendly Neighborhood Drone, an unmanned aerial vehicle designed to be able to fly entirely by itself from launch to landing in the smallest package I could manage from parts available to anyone. For reasons I do not yet fully understand, some people are hesitant to embrace drone technology, and I wanted to make this drone as friendly as possible. Sort of an ambassador for all robot kind, if you will. This project started with a desire to have something legal to fly for a trip south of the California border. Many places in the world require drones to weigh less than 250 grams for you to fly them without a license or registration. So my goal for this project was to make a lightweight drone that could legally be flown almost anywhere. What I ended up with was this incredibly small, lightweight, fully autonomous drone that almost anyone can make, fits in something as small as a backpack, and still delivers high definition video footage. Over the years I've become fairly good at creating what I want in an aircraft on the first try. But this simple design took five iterations before I had something on my hands that I was happy with. On the first two builds I was designing around a camera I found on Amazon which I'm pretty sure was actually a scam, but by the time I went to buy it it was apparent that something was up and I didn't bother. Fortunately Daniel from RC Test Flight showed up to work on another collaboration about that time and thought this plane was pretty cool. He showed me his Insta360 GO 2 and I now had a high quality camera to design around. That new direction needed two more airframe iterations to get right. But in the end, I think the finished product was pretty cool and a lot more capable than what I thought was possible in a build this small, at least when I first had started the project. Okay, so this is how you don't solder a battery together. But you should definitely be using a spot welder. Unlike what I'm doing. While Daniel was here, we went out one morning to get some footage and to test out the plane. He was pretty happy with it and he thought this would make a great first person view platform. I disagreed and felt this would make a better UAV. Let me know in the comments below that you agree with me. So I finally had a build that could do the job well. There were a few electronic gremlins to sort out and I'll share with you later in the video what setup ended up working for me. There she goes. One problem I had to fix was getting these tiny motors to rotate consistently which meant that on several occasions the propeller stopped turning and the airplane made an unplanned landing in someone else's yard. But this did give the friendly neighborhood drone the opportunity to make new friends. Look at that little ant on the lower left. It's like, I don't care, seems friendly to me. I'm just gonna keep moving this rock. And there's my plane, so close yet so far away. Grrr. And then a few more stopped by to check out their new bestie. Eventually, it even made another human friend. Is this it? Yeah, I was wondering what happened. I guess one of those motor, those wires came loose. Oh. That's what happened right there. Okay. Because I launched it, and then it just, I just thought, started sinking, 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 and I couldn't do anything. So, oh. oops. A cool thing about this drone is that since it is so small and lightweight, it is nearly impossible to damage. Because of this, I was curious to try my very first autonomous landings despite not having anything other than a GPS and a barometer to work with. This also meant that as the drone came in to land, I could catch it in my hands like a frisbee. Check it out! Without more sensors for the autopilot to rely on, I would not try this with something larger without possibly getting injured or damaging the craft. With modern electronics, however, these small-scale experiments can now be safely attempted. Did I 
is nice. I do a little uh, mission here. The plane's gonna land on its own, so just kind of like watch out for me. I'm not really in control. It's just doing its own thing. <laughs> I've never done it before with this plane, so I don't know how well it's gonna go. This is the first time I have ever tried a completely autonomous mission, and my first flight happened to be at a local club where I fly on a busy Sunday morning. The perfect stage for embarrassing myself. However, not only did I avoid embarrassment, the friendly neighborhood drone quickly became the center of attention as everyone wanted a chance to fly it. Each person took their turn launching it, watching it fly its pre-programmed mission, and then come back and land all by itself. My local club buddies have seen me fly various projects out there for years, from simple to complex, but I don't think anything I've flown has generated nearly as much curiosity. I'm gonna fly out time. Oh, okay. Amazing. Wanna do it again now? Quite a bit of testing to narrow down a reliable setup and to figure out a consistent landing sequence, it was time to go get some video footage and see what the world looks like through the eyes of this little robot. It's freaking freezing and my fingers are not going to survive. It's like 22 degrees. It's 22 degrees and these birds are freaking diving in the water. Not only are they in the water, they're diving in the water. How do they not freeze to death? I don't understand. Well, I guess, I guess I take that back. The friendly neighborhood drone doesn't seem all that bad, really. In fact, it would make a great toy for the children. That's kind of cute. I'd, I'd probably wait to see when it comes back. I like it. It's good. It's like a neighborhood drone. All right, I guess not all drones are that bad and evil. Uh, I really appreciate the explanation, Kevin, and for helping me and this guy work out our differences. Ain't that right, little buddy? I mean, I gotta say, I gotta eat my words. The drone that Kevin made, it's 
it really just changed my mind. It's such an ambassador to all drones. I think it's fantastic. I mean, I want one for each of my kids. It's awesome. We we definitely want them around. They're going to be great for our humanity. They're going to take us far. And I'm excited to see what happens. So that's about it for this one. All in all, I would say this is one of the most rewarding projects I've ever done. It's extremely low risk, yet high reward, and it's really accessible for everyone. Before I started this project, even I didn't realize how accessible all this technology could be. For those of you that are more tech savvy and want to give it a try on your own, in this case I'm using Arduplane, which as far as I'm concerned is the best autopilot software on the planet. And for telemetry, I ended up going with a Dragonlink micro receiver and transmitter. The telemetry caused the biggest headaches on this project, for sure. Set it back a couple of months trying to find a small, reliable unit. The micro receiver comes in at about 12 grams, and I was able to strip it down to about 6 grams and still get, I think, the same functionality. You can see I've soldered the antennas directly onto the pads to save weight, so I was able to take off that SMA connector. I also took off all of the pins and direct soldered on the, the RC and telemetry link. Uh, actually, that's just the RC link. Here's the telemetry link, and that goes in there. And then I took off the, um, I took off the, I think it was like a heat sink and kind of like an RF shield at the same time, and I replaced it with copper tape with um, non-conductive tape underneath. That's called captain tape that goes underneath the copper tape. So um, don't hate on me, Dragon Link, if I um, did something you don't like. And Dragon Link will be coming out with a new nano receiver with the same functionality as the one that I was able to strip down. So you won't need to do any of that. And for the autopilot hardware, I used my favorite controller, which is the Mayan Robotics Control Zero. And um, I used the F7 board, which is really tiny. Uh, they have an H7 board now, which is better, but it's also a little bit larger. Uh, but it's definitely more powerful. And there is a completed 2-cell lithium-ion 1100mAh 9-amp battery at 54.2 grams. Motors were a real problem on this one. I found that on uh, BL Heli Speed controllers running D-Shot 600, I had to run 12 millimeter motors. I tried 11 millimeter motors, which are definitely powerful enough for this tiny little guy, which weighs about six, six ounces. So I couldn't get them to commutate appropriately. If somebody in the audience knows what I was doing wrong, please drop a comment and let me know how I could get those 11 millimeter motors running. That would save about 30% of motor weight. That is about it for me for this video. Get out there and fly something. Yeah, friendly neighborhood drones for all the children.